You're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Welcome aboard. It's episode eight of the Ride the Bus podcast. As you had to check the numbers there, check the math in your head. Ride the Bus, the official podcast of the Iowa Wild. Presented by Explore Minnesota, Ben Gislason, voice of the Iowa Wild here. For usual, my co-host, Joey Goldstein, head of marketing. A couple of heads together, make a rock pile, something like that. I've heard that yeah. in some circles. I yeah. think it fits with this podcast. But uh, great to be back. We're really looking forward to this week with Matt Boldy. We teased it last week in the Bill Guerin episode. No disrespect to any of our previous guests, but getting some heavy hitters in here as we get towards our, our ninth and 10th episodes. Mm-hmm. This being episode eight, we're really excited about it. Uh, but before we get to Matt, uh, let, let's catch up a little bit. Uh, what's new? What's going on since the last time we sat down here at this table in the Iowa Wild locker room? Um, what is new? What else is going on? Honestly, it's just, I, I feel like it's just more of the same. This this time of the off season, it's just a lot of preparation and planning for, for everything that's coming up. So that's kind of what we've really been working on. And I think we'll get into some of it in the 10-year tidbits. But not not a ton has, has changed uh, in, in my world. You went on a little trip this weekend, got, a little, got away a little bit. Yep, yep. Uh, I was up in Clear Lake, uh, enjoying the Clear Lake area. Uh, it's a wonderful place. It's interesting, in Minnesota, you, you go to so many places, weekend getaways, if you have the opportunity to, and it's more of a cabin feel. Mm-hmm. Like Clear Lake uh, is, it's almost, it feels a little bit like, I've never been to Nantucket, but it almost feels a little bit like that East Coast sea town type feel which okay. is, is is new for a minnesota kid like sure. me so uh yeah I, I i enjoy getting to go up there i have a couple connections to some family uh some in-law family up there so uh yeah yeah very nice place um beautiful lake and it was nice to be on the lake with the scorching heat that's making me melt on a daily basis yeah here. it was is like it hotter here than boston do you think um is it hum- humidity is it worse <laughs> from what i've from what i take from talking with everybody back home they're definitely going through a heat wave as well, but it's not like, like I think, on Saturday, I think it was, I looked at my phone. The temperature said a hundred degrees. Humidity was like sixty percent, and the feel outside was like one hundred fifteen. So they're not going through that back <laughs> at home, but we're definitely getting it here. And it's, I agree with you. I I hate the heat. I'd rather be cold than hot and sweaty and sticky. So like. I, those days like that, I don't do a whole lot. I'm at home, enjoying the air conditioning. Um, I, I mean, I, I like being outside every now and then, but that's just too hot. That's, like, unbearable. The thing that kills me is the humidity. I, d- yeah. I think it was a Saturday this past weekend. We were out. The Clear Lake has a big – it's kind of an antique car show every mm-hmm. every year, th- this time of year. And so they do the parade on Friday, and then they go and they set all the cars out in kind of the downtown area on Saturday. It's really neat. Um, and so we're checking out the cars, and we just sat and ate lunch. And I was sweating profusely. And the, the sun wasn't even out that day. Yeah. But it was so humid I, yeah, see, that's that you just – it dr- it drags yeah. the sweat out of you. And yeah. it's just – It's that sticky feeling. Yeah, I, I can't just, do I it. I can't stand it. No. It's, it's the worst. And uh, I start sweating. I can't stop. So, like, I, I don't enjoy that. <laughs> but – for you being on the lake, what like give me your top three lake activities? What do you like to do when you're up on the lake? Uh, I I think like a pontoon flotilla type thing, okay. or if you if you have a few pontoons, friends of pontoons, uh, you get together and you float on the lake, jump in the lake, mm-hmm. hang out, grab a grab a pool noodle and float around there a little go. bit. Uh, I love that. Uh, big big fisherman. I, I love fishing. Fishing's big. I actually probably put fishing first over th- the pontoon flotilla, but that's in there. Um, and then, so my, my family has, we they got very lucky. My grandparents bought our family's lake place in Wisconsin in the winter and did not know that the area they bought had a sand beach, about three feet of water. Mm-hmm. And so we could, our family's all growing up playing a lot of different, like volleyball, set up a volleyball net there. Sure. Um, play a bunch of different games, football in the water, a lot mm-hmm. of stuff like that. So those would be my, my top three fishing pontoon flotilla general water games water games and yeah. activities <laughs> water okay. games and activities right. um but uh speaking of water let's move on to our 10-year tidbits presented by explore minnesota 
From the world's largest freshwater lake to professional sports stadiums, two designated international dark sky sanctuaries to the home of music icon Prince, and so much more. It's easy to dream big in Minnesota, discover action-packed events or places of solitude and relaxation by visiting exploreminnesota.com. First and foremost on our Ted Year Tidbits, the promo schedule as of today, mm -hmm. fans might be listening to this before it officially comes out, but by the end of the day, Tuesday, it will be out. It'll be out, and we're very excited about it. It's We put a lot of work in on the back end, really piecing things together. It's so a little insight on this process. I mean, we started this process months ago. I think we sat down as a staff. We had a big brainstorm. It must have been late maybe middle of May, late May, we sat everybody down and we said, all right, let's list off any ideas we've got for theme nights, for giveaways, for specialty jerseys, like top to bottom, what can we come up with? I think we had we had hundreds of ideas. I don't know. You remember we had like all the, the almost like the oversized post-it notes all mm -hmm. around the conference room, all different ideas. We take those ideas back to the marketing group and then we start to shrink them down a little bit. Let's start talking through different things. What can we really – have a lot of fun with what can we theme out from an in-game experience where we can also tie in social and you know, our, our email marketing and everything across the board how can ticket sales get involved how can corporate sponsorship get involved once we narrow that down then we've got our ideas then we gotta wait for the schedule to come out and then it's then it's just it's a big jigsaw puzzle basically you're, you're placing which themes go right on this day and why and you know sometimes there's uh, sponsor elements that need to be tied into different things. So it's it's a giant puzzle, but we feel pretty good about it and good enough to that we can share it. Uh, I will say there are probably more uh, more items that are going to be added, not items, more like themes and promotions that are probably sure. be added that we're not ready to announce just yet. Uh, probably some big ones uh, that I know people are hopefully looking forward to. So we've probably got a list of five five ish that we haven't rolled out with yet. Uh, but what's on there now is great. All of our giveaways are out there, um, both our bobbleheads, which um, I, I don't want to give away too much if you're, you're getting this early, but it'll, bobbleheads are, are two of our guests who we've had so far, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and the, the theme night's great. A lot of the recurring ones that you guys are used to, you know, Pink in the Rink, Military Appreciation, Local Heroes Night, those will all be there. Uh, and then some new ones as well, which we think people will be excited about. Of all of the newer ones, and you might give a little little sneak peek here uh, answering this question, was there one that took the most work or was the hardest to formulate, whether it was in your head, in the heads of the rest of you and your marketing team? When you think back on, boy, we really had to spend a lot of time on this. What promo is it, and will it make that night end up that much sweeter when it comes to fruition? Uh, I don't know if there was one that was like difficult to piece together. There's definitely some that come with like a lot of a lot of logistics, and one of those is probably one that we haven't announced yet. If we are able to make that one happen, um, kind of makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> the fact yeah. It's still working it on it, which is why planning. it's one of the hardest. Yeah. Yes, but I think, yeah, a lot of the. I mean, they're they're all logistically can be difficult. I mean, you look at military appreciation night, and we've done this every year where we've got the vehicles out here, we've got the the national guard that repelling from the from the the skywalk like that's there's a lot that goes into that um i think the biggest thing for us is how can we make things different year over year obviously we did this this we did this for pink in the rink last year how can we make pink in the rink this year better same thing with local heroes night military appreciation night pucks and paws you know what can we do to make these nights better um i think the the big one's really going to be that school day game though because mm -hmm. uh, we haven't done that in a couple of years we've got a really relatively new staff not a lot of people have done this yet and you got to keep that one entertaining throughout, not just from a hockey perspective, but keeping the kids entertained. We've got workbooks that will go to all the kids in attendance, so they'll be able to stay engaged throughout the game. But you're trying to find different elements to kind of keep them tied, and that's probably the one that's that's going to take a, a, a lot of planning, a lot of work on our end to facilitate. I was extremely lucky to get to, to, get to experience a school day game back in, I think it was 2018, 2019. No, 20, sorry, 2019 going into 2020. Uh, when I was just working fill-in play-by-play here, we it's one of the 
games that Joe was not able to be here for. He was in Minnesota for a, a Minnesota Wild game at the time, and I got to come in and do a game. I th I think it was Chicago. Unfortunately, I I want I think it was a one nothing game. I think the Wild lost one nothing. So of all the games to have that happen, yeah. not a day when you have ten thousand plus kids so in the building. That's a day where you want goals. Oh, you want, you want six excited. five. Yeah. You want just a, a I, wild game. I remember in the first time we did a school day game, we were in San Jose, and it was it was different. They hadn't done it before out there, and we had a school day game. And within within five minutes of puck drop. There was a fight. So Perfect. We were talking 11 a.m. <laughs> there was a fight, and it, we found out after the game, our the front desk receptionist was getting phone calls from teachers in the building saying, you know, there's a fight. How can we stop the fights from happening on the ice? Like, there's nothing we can do. It's just that's just part yeah, of the your game. Hands and that's are tied the there, is. unfortunately. And, um, <laughs> it, it created so much excitement for the kids, and that's what you're looking for. We always joke we should hand out earplugs to the people who aren't students, but that's all part of the experience. You got to be here to enjoy and experience the noise that comes with that game because there's, unless you have 18,000 people in a building, it's, it's very hard to match that decibel level. Yeah, there, There's no question. Um, other tidbits you wanted to get to before we uh, introduce the pride of Beantown. I think we're good to go to the Pride of Beantown. Uh, then you should introduce it as a fellow Beantown, Bean Bostonian? Bostonian. I was going to say Beantownonian, yeah, but that's nope. definitely not nope. ever said. I probably made that up for the first time ever on uh, that word right there. So yeah. Bostonian, yes. Yeah. Beantownonian. Yep. I'm going to make that happen. I'm, let's get I'm a, not going to help let's you. Get a, let's, let's, see on your let's see if there. Barstool will make a T-shirt. You're on your own Yes, yeah, so we got Matt Boldy on, which is very exciting. Obviously, uh, one of the, the bigger names that come out of Iowa in the last couple of years. First round draft pick, uh, really made his mark. I mean, we we've said it a bunch of times. The the day we found out he was getting called up, everybody kind of had the same feeling like he's not coming back. He was just he was very dominant when he was here, and he showcased that pretty well. I mean, had he played a full season in in Minnesota instead of half the year, he's probably a Calder finalist. Well, and that injury the, might have been the reason why we yeah. saw him in the first place. Yeah. I, he may have never even. Oh, I agree. Down. Yeah, I think if had he, he would have gotten injured camp, in we probably would have seen no. him. But had he played the full season, he'd be a call their finalist, I would assume, based on the the, the rate he was putting up points. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember being – I just happened to be able to to be home and going to a Bruins game when Minnesota was in town over – I think it was I think it was Thanksgiving time. Or no, it had to have been closer to New Year's when he made his debut. It was, yeah, after after the New Year. It was after the New we, Year. We all watched as a, yeah. as a group in Winnipeg yeah. uh, when we were up there. Right, I think it was maybe the third or the fourth. It was right after that we flew like the second, yeah. I, I think, of of uh, January. Yeah, and so it was an early game. Yeah, yeah. we got I, we got lucky. I just because that's right because it was after New Year's Eve. I remember flying home. Uh, I tied my Patriots game to like everything you, you try to do when you hit home. And I looked at the schedule. All oh, the Bruins were at home. Who were they playing? It just happened to be Minnesota, and it worked out that that was the game where Bold and uh, Marco Rossi were making their debut, so it was nice to be able to go and see that and see him score. I remember looking at my brother during warm up saying, there, one of them's going to score a goal at some point. And of course, Boldy gets his first in his hometown. So, like, it's really exciting. But it was great to talk to him. He's he's such a personable yeah. guy, and he's got a lot of stories. And he's just, I don't know, he strikes, he's just very happy go lucky all the time. So. Yeah, he's got that rare combination of you can tell he's a competitor. You can mm -hmm. and, and you really get to see it when you you see him around the locker room. We start game talking about day. him and the, the conversation with him and his brother. Yes, yeah. yeah he, all of a sudden, the little happy-go-lucky smile sort of turned into a, yeah. a grumpy frown because he was angry that he hadn't beaten his brother yet. Apparently, in golf, which is it, it definitely stick around if you if you're debating on getting off the bus on this interview, stick around and at least hear that part because I I thought that was one of the best yeah. parts. You could <laughs> you could you, even if you're not watching on YouTube, you'll be able to sense the shift. You can hear it in the. In his cadence, his voice, yeah. <laughs> how how upset this man. I mean, Matt, one thing I learned, and you you knew this going in, but he's a tremendous golfer, and it sounds like his brother is just as good. He said he was even better. Yeah, so it's it's one which of must have hurt Matt to say that on yeah. a recorded podcast. Yeah, it's he's probably there, going to tell make sure record, make sure that his yeah. brother doesn't know that this podcast goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just a, a, a fantastic young man. Obviously, a fantastic hockey player. Iowa Wild alum and now Minnesota Wild up and coming potential budding superstar Matt Boldy. On to period two with our next guest. It's episode eight of Riding the Bus, continuing 
uh, here. It's been a little bit of a, a sweaty day for you and I. We might be glistening a little bit. Uh, our guest is not glistening. He's primed and ready, as he always is. First-round draft pick of the Minnesota Wild and a guy who made a terrific splash with Minnesota last season in his rookie year after beginning with the Iowa Wild, Matt Boldy. Matt, it's great to be joined by you here uh, today. Thanks so much for doing this. We've been looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, excited to get this going. So you haven't probably had a ton of bus stories, and we, we had this same sort of issue with, with your general manager, Bill Guerin, last week. So quickly got into the National Hockey League, didn't mm -hmm. have time to accrue many AHL bus stories. But that is the first question we ask every guest. So can you tell us a good bus story from your time on the bus, even though it might be little compared to our other guests that we have on this show? <laughs> uh, I didn't have too many in Iowa. I was on... Uh... I was on the the younger guys bus because uh, of COVID. We had two, so we were pretty quiet on our bus. Um, I mean, Boston College buses were pretty fun. We uh, we never had anything too far, but everything was basically like about an hour to two hours. So we had uh, we had our fun in the group chat with kind of what we had going with uh, all our underclassmen had a big group chat going, and a lot of our bus rides home after games were. We're kind of just ripping on each other in the group chat. Uh, actually, easy target that you know Mike Hardman was uh, <laughs> was very popular in that game, just kind of getting shredded apart. But it was uh, that's probably the the most fun looking back that I've had from being on the bus and kind of getting my laps in. For those bus rides at, at BC, was it similar setup like it is on the pros now, with the older guys sitting in the back and the younger younger guys sitting in the front? Is it oh, seniors in the back, freshmen in the front? Yeah. Of course, of course. I like it. So I want to talk about BC. It's, you know, where you got your start. I'm a Massachusetts guy. BC was a big deal for me growing up. How did, how did BC become your choice? How did you decide this is where I want to go play college hockey over some of the other big schools in the area? Yeah, for me, it was pretty easy. I, uh, I grew up kind of going to all the BC games. Um, my best friend's dad, Marty McGinnis was a volunteer coach there. So we, uh, we were pretty lucky with being able to kind of go down into the locker room and, and meet the players and stuff like that. And I, I kind of just fell in love with it. And like I said, ever since I was like 11 years old, I kind of grew up going to those games, being, being around uh, BC and stuff like that. So when I kind of got the, the chance to go there, it was, it was pretty easy to, to make that decision. And you got to play for Jerry York, who's an absolute legend in just hockey in general. What was it like? playing for a guy like that yeah it's awesome uh coach york is is unbelievable just to start just a human being he is kind of how much he cares for everyone and how much of a, a leader he is it's it's incredible to kind of see and be a part of it's you learn a lot from him and kind of you learn how to be a better person more than than a better hockey player in a lot of ways which obviously i think translates over but just the way he manages his teams and and kind of brings groups together and and kind of disciplines his teams to to make them into really good hockey teams. I think is uh, what makes him so impressive. I'm under the impression though that your first impression with Coach York, I'm sure on the ice, was fantastic. But there was an incident regarding ping pong that happened with Coach York early that you had to work your yourself through. What what can or can't you tell us about what happened in this scenario? Yeah, that, that one was tough. It was. Uh, it was early, early in my freshman year, and we had a ping pong table in the room, just playing ping pong like I kind of did every day with my roommate Alex Newhook, and I was shot towards like the the entrance side, so like I was hitting down towards the entrance, and Newhook just kind of laid one right into me for an easy one, and he's pretty good, so I had to get my points when I could get them, so I took advantage of it, kind of slammed it as hard as I could, and it hit the table, and of course. As I hit it, uh, Coach York kind of walks in the room and turns and looks, and the ball's already in flight, and it just smokes him in the eye. <laughs> and that was a uh, that was not a good look early on in freshman year. I thought that that I was going to be digging myself out of the hole pretty early. What was his response to that? How did he come up from that? Uh, he took it like a champ. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, the best he could have taken it. He. Uh, basically said it was all right and just just to be careful next time it was it was pretty bad luck it's obviously wasn't intentional that's well, good he didn't you know he didn't get buried on the depth chart or anything like that so i think that's 
That's always a positive. A coach like Coach York, yeah. he, he gets old, like he said, take it like a champion. Mm -hmm. he, I'm sure that he just he probably moved on from it immediately. Yeah, just wants to teach yeah. these guys to be tough, blocking shots. Yeah. Sometimes lead by example. Ping pong ball <laughs> in the room. I mean, things happen. Things happen. You uh, so being able to obviously you know you score your first goal in Boston, which is a big deal. But growing up in that area, who I mean, who did you grow up watching, idolizing? Who were the Bruins players that you looked up to as you were you know getting ready to transition to the college game into the pro game? Yeah, I think I was a, a Bruins fan, but I wouldn't say that they were my favorite team to watch. I think when when they were winning that cup and and uh, they were really good when I was growing up, it was kind of more of a, a grittier game, I think, that they like to play, kind of dump it in and play really hard. And obviously, I know that that's part of the game, but for me, I like to kind of play a little bit more creative than that. So they weren't my favorite team to watch, but... I think growing up, I, I really idolized like Sidney Crosby and like the young young guys in the league that were kind of lighting it up and and playing really well. So I think Crosby was someone I looked up to a lot just because he played he played so well and so skilled and creative and scored, but he, he was kind of all over the place and how good of a player he was. Any chance I've had to talk to someone who's just walking into the, their first foray into the National Hockey League? I always like to ask, who's the player that you wound up on the ice with and whether it's in warmups or whether it was in the game where you almost had, did you have a moment where you had to pinch yourself and think, you know, man, this is Patrick Kane or this is Sidney Crosby. That's he's right there. Did, did you have, have you had that moment yet? Or, or maybe you just moved on right past it. I, I don't know. That's why I'm curious. And I'm asking. Yeah, honestly, I, I feel like my whole life I've never been like, I'd never gotten like too excited over like meeting people or, or kind of like realizing how big some people were. So I think kind of going into to playing, that probably helped me out a little bit, not freaking out about it. Obviously playing in my, my first NHL game versus guys like Marshawn and, and Bergeron and guys like that, guys that obviously I watched a lot um, as I got older and they kind of became studs in the NHL. It was pretty cool. But I think I think the only one that I was like, wow, this is kind of like insane was when Flurry got traded to the wild and like walked into our locker room. Just kind of like I said, I was a kind of a Penguins fan growing up. So him walking into our room and kind of introducing himself to me, I was like, "Wow, that's that's pretty legit right there. That's pretty cool. That's that's probably the biggest like uh, moment where I was like, all right, that's that's pretty cool." Well, for the young hockey players out there, there's the difference in those who play the game and those who talk about the game. Mm -hmm. You just you, you take care of yourself. Where mm -hmm. I was too busy going, "Oh, look at this guy. Look at yeah. this guy." Right. <laughs> when Fleury walks in, I mean, all the stories you hear about him, he's an awesome guy on the ice, off the ice. But one of the biggest things with him is he's a huge prankster. Did you witness any of that since he joined the team in Minnesota? Did you get to see any of that firsthand? Uh, I mean, he definitely had, he definitely had a few. I think he, like you said, he's an unbelievable guy on and off the ice. Just kind of keeps it light. He always has a smile, but. I think he's pretty quiet about his pranks. Like he doesn't like, at least from what I saw, we might've talked to some of the older guys about it, but he kind of likes to keep it quiet and kind of make it not known that it was him. And I think that's what kind of makes it so much better in a lot of ways, just because it's not out there bragging about it after he does it. He's just kind of in the corner giggling and, and kind of laughing about it. So were you on the receiving end of anything <laughs> then? Cause it sounds like no, you might've been, no. you weren't too sure who it was. Way to dig in there, Joey. No, I, like I was lucky. I didn't get anything this year, really. Anything too bad. Nothing like Duhame's car. Oh, I saw the video about that. Have you seen this yet? I have not seen this. Tell tell this story for people. They, uh, I think Minnesota put the video out, but for those who haven't, share yeah. that story. I, so Duhame, he drives, a, he drives a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And after one of our games, we won, and he walked out, and his car was filled with packing peanuts, like all the way no to the top. Way. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if that was Flurry. I, I was told that it was Dums, which would make a lot of sense because Dums gives Brandon a hard time. But I mean, everyone does. Um, but people were also saying that it was Flurry too. So I, that's kind of where I was like, I don't really know who it is, and. Like you said, I kind of keep my head down and, and not ask too many questions and not draw too much attention to me. Hope, hopefully that they weren't doing it to me. It's the next game. 
The silent pranksters. I was going to say, gotta worry about. maybe that's the mystique of, uh, of Marc-Andre Fleury yeah. is he never takes credit for his pranks, so that way no one can ever go, well, that's a Fleury prank. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, he's done this before because he just sits there and he laughs silently to himself. Yeah. Silent assassin, Marc-Andre yeah, Fleury. You never really know. Uh, sticking in the, the locker room theme, Matt, I, I'm curious, fr- from, from college to the American League to the National Hockey League, differences within the rooms there and just how the rooms interact is it all sort of similar are there differences that you can think of as far as interaction between players goes now that you've reached the national hockey league um i wouldn't say it's too different i think like the level to like guidance i think is a little bit different um just because, like, that age gap just kind of keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like, the more you go, like, college is obviously – you're playing with guys that are, like, at most, like, six – some cases, like, seven years older than you, which is, like, obviously a big gap, but it's nothing that's, like, kind of ridiculous. And I think once you go to, like, the HL and the HL, it's, like, guys are, like, a lot older than you. Guys have kind of been through it a lot more, have, have kind of experienced everything and, like, their guidance, I think, is comes out a lot more, with, whether it's just kind of like talking you through certain things or, or giving you advice and stuff like that. And I think uh, like the amount that you get just kind of grows in terms of like player to player connection and that. But I mean, other than that, I think most locker rooms are the same. It doesn't really matter the level. I think hockey has a lot of, a lot of really good people in it and, and good guys for the most part. So it's, uh, it's always a fun time being in a locker room for sure. Now that you've established yourself, you're an NHL player, you can speak probably more so than most on the differences in when you get on the ice with NHLers compared to AHLers. Uh, w- one thing I've heard is some guys almost say it might get a little easier because players are where they need to be every time. They rarely miss passes. But I'm curious, anything that you've noticed that maybe isn't as often talked about in the difference between you know, an every night AHLer to an every night NHLer. What are some of the things you've seen about the level of play or just little nuances that are different at the national hockey level that the AHL level doesn't have that maybe you think only you could see that because you're in it every day where there are some things that I hear or Joey hears that we get to hear because it's more often talked about if, if that question makes sense. Yeah, I think it, a lot of it has to do with like managing your mistakes. I think, um, I think that was something I kind of noticed a lot, especially like being an offensive player when like defensemen make, like I've played my whole life. There's always defensemen that make mistakes and I was some are easier, defensemen. easier yeah. to, to, to take advantage <laughs> of than others. And I think in the NHL, it's those mistakes are a lot finer in, in a lot of areas. Just it's a mistake obviously, but it's, it's recoverable. And most of the time those guys are, are good enough to make a, make plays on it to kind of recover and get back and, and kind of still be in a good spot. And I think that was something I noticed a lot. And then obviously like just simple things like puck battles, like some of these guys are ridiculous with their sticks. Like I think something I learned pretty quick was once I got called up was you're, you're you might as well just dump it in if you're on a two on one versus Spurgeon and, and trying to get it across. Like some guys are just so naturally gifted with that stuff. And, and you're just not getting it there. There's there's no chance. I don't think I've ever gone cross ice to someone on a two on one versus Spurgeon, and we wow. we had a lot of them. Yeah. Is there so you talk about the guys with you know, just the skill level that they have is insane. Is there is there like one moment that stands out to you from during the season? And maybe it was something during practice that you saw, or something in one of the games that you just like it kind of stopped you in your tracks. You're like, oh my god, I cannot believe this person just did that. It just blew you away. Um, I think we see it a lot with, uh, Brodeen on, on our back end, just kind of how good he skates and how good he is at shutting guys down every night. But I think where I was kind of like, wow, like that was kind of crazy. We were playing the Flyers in Minnesota and I went out to like block my shot, kind of get in the lane, go out to my D in uh, our defensive zone and Provorov just like opened his hips, like walked directly around me and walked right down Broadway. And thankfully he didn't score. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, wow, that was bad. Like I just got absolutely walked and like, it happened so quick. I was like, that was, that was not good. So there's and, uh, even, yeah, even coming back to the bench, guys was like, Hey, like, what are you going to do? 
Like that's that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean he's an impressive skater. He's great. That's true. That Sometimes there's just plays where you just probably have do. to go. All right, yeah. like that was a you know once in yeah. a season play a guy makes, and I happen to be the one who was in his path. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think there's there's a play, and I think if you look back on the hockey season as a whole across the whole NHL, there's one play that is is on it's going to be on every highlight reel I think for the rest of time, and that's the Zegra school. And you had a chance to play with him with the national development team. When you saw that goal, what was your reaction? Did you reach out to him immediately? Like, what was going through your head when you saw him pull this off in the middle of a game? Honestly, I wasn't that surprised. Um, like, I, I've seen him try to pull that off many times. Like you said, I played with him for, for two years and in, in uh, some USA tournaments, too. So, he uh, – like it didn't really surprise me. Like that's just kind of the player he is. He's he's crazily creative. He's he doesn't really have a, a care in the world for, for how it goes. If it doesn't go well, he kinda if it doesn't go well, he, he kinda collects himself pretty quick and makes it makes another play. So when he did it, I was like, Wow, I can't believe he did that in the game but the fact that he pulled it off and kinda was able to do it didn't surprise me too much. One of the small things that uh, I'm sure that maybe you've thought about or it's got to be really I I exciting and exhilarating for you now as you're building your NHL career out is you bring up Zegris. I think of guys like Cole Caulfield you played with, obviously Cam York guys, Spencer Knight, uh, Alex Newhook you brought up, your roommate Mike Hardman who's making his way into the Chicago Blackhawks, probably closer to a full-time guy now than he was last year. You've got all these different guys who you are very close with, whether it was – five years ago or three years ago or two years ago that you know, how much of it for you is, is special that when you go to Anaheim or you go to Chicago or you go to these different places, you're getting to lock horns with some of probably your best friends every night. Yeah, it's really cool. I think kind of – I think the hockey world's really connected in a lot of ways. So, I think, like you said, whether it's going to cities and playing other guys that are that are in the NHL or stuff like that, it's, it's really cool getting to see them and kind of get dinner and – and relax with them but it's, it kind of goes the same way like I still see kids that I grew up playing youth hockey with here in Boston every once in a while and it's it's the same thing it's like I'm I haven't it's like I, I've seen them every day since it's just kind of the connection that the hockey world has and kind of how close everyone is it's it's pretty cool I've asked enough questions about other people. I want to talk about Matt Boldy. Uh, two specific things that I have right away, and it's funny, we were talking about stick work and puck battles. One thing I noticed right away with you, Matt, is, and it, it, it must help you at the national hockey level where apparently everybody can do it, but you don't lose many puck battles, at least out here at Wells Fargo Arena right away. You were surgical going into corners sometimes, strong on your stick. It didn't take you long. You didn't fumble around with it. You got in, got a stick lift, pulled the puck out, and made a play. Is that something that came innately? Is that something you think you've worked on to create as a skill for yourself? Kind of walk us through how that became an asset to you because at least for this AHL broadcaster, I, it's one of the things that jumped out to me about you right away. I think, I think I've always had kind of good hands and – in good control over my stick, which I think obviously helped. But, I mean, I think a lot of it's kind of natural and you don't think about it too much. But, obviously, you you work out in the summers and during the year to kind of be strong, which helped. But I think a lot of it kind of came from just always wanting the puck when I was little. I think it's easier, obviously, in, in youth hockey to, to have the puck more and kind of be able to control it. So, I definitely always wanted it when I was little. And I think just, just – growing up having that confidence where I had the puck a lot and kind of the mentality that, that it was my puck rather than anyone else has kind of helped a lot, just kind of always wanting it and finding different ways to, to get it on my stick. The second item or second characteristic is the snapshot for you. Uh, saw it right away, game one here in Iowa. You score your first pro goal in your first pro game. We got to watch it when the American League Wild were in Winnipeg, watching you guys play in Boston. You got that puck in the slot. It was on the stick, off the stick like this. And no one in that room was surprised to see you score there because they'd all seen it in practice. We'd seen you do it at the American League level. Is it pucks in the driveway? Was it specialized shooting growing up? Tell us about the Matt Boldy wrist shot that's come to be because it really is fun to watch on a nightly basis. Yeah, I think it was it wasn't anything crazy, just just your normal kind of childhood growing up, uh just shooting pucks in the driveway in the basement and stuff like that. It's it's kind of more of 
just having fun with it and trying different things rather than just sitting there and just firing pucks randomly into into the net. I think growing up, I tried to kind of do a lot with shooting at weird angles and, and stuff like that and just have fun with it. And then obviously it's something I still work on quite a bit, just finding different ways to shoot pucks to kind of find holes and goalies and kind of get their feet moving so that you can, you can kind of take advantage of them and something that I kind of work with with my skills coach here in Boston too in the summer. So that leads into, I'm sure you're not just still sitting in the driveway shooting pucks. So what are you doing? Be great over if the, he was that'd though, be right? Awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> but what kind of things are you doing over the summer? You said you're working with a skills coach. I mean, how else are you staying in game shape? Are you playing in, in league with guys? Like I know obviously in Minnesota, they got the beauty league. I know there's a league in Foxborough that's pretty big, but like, what are you doing to mm-hmm. stay in game shape? Yeah, we, we have a league here in Boston. That's a, it's a three on three league on like a smaller sheet ice. Um, every Monday night, which is, which is great. You kind of get to go out there and replicate a game and the small ice is great because things happen a little bit quicker. It's three on three too. So it's nice, but uh, a lot of it's just kind of skating with, with my skills coach. And I put a lot of trust into him. Um, I have the last five, six summers and it's been going pretty well. So until that, that kind of starts failing, I'll, I'll stick with them, but it's uh it's a lot, a lot of skill work, a lot of, a lot of small area games, and kind of thinking on your feet, and and like I said, kind of finding ways to manipulate the game in your favor. Imagine it looks a lot like our three-on-three ball hockey game we had earlier today. Probably eerily mm. similar, like speed and close. finesse and skill level. Yeah, really similar. I can, I can, you know what? Now that you mentioned yeah, it, yeah, I think I so. can see it. I know yeah. Marquise is not in his head in the background. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. that makes sense for sure. What, mm-hmm. what else? What else are you up to over the summer here? Like, I mean, I know Boston's. Hold a special place in my in my heart. Great place to be. You have trips planned. You're going anywhere. You're doing a lot of things. What's what's Matt Boldy been up to over the summer? Yeah, it's been it's been a pretty relaxed summer, honestly. Um, I haven't gone anywhere really. I I went back to Minnesota for the Fourth of July. Um, it's a great place. See to some spend. of the guys. Yeah, see see some of the guys, which was a lot of fun. Um, but other than that, I've kind of just been been rocking around Boston, just hanging out. Um, Working out, skating, and, and a lot of golf. That's about it. So basically, how we got it. Yeah, here days. we go. Here we go. I was hoping yeah. we'd lead into that. So we want to talk about the golf yeah. game because I we talked a little bit about it before we started recording. The first thing I want to know. So I I was unaware that Matt Boldy was this unbelievable golfer. Had no idea. I mean, most hockey players are decent golfers. Didn't realize you were as good as you actually are. But I'm listening to spit spit and chicklets, and I'm sure you probably have heard this through the weeds already. Ryan Whitney comes yeah. on. He starts talking about how he played against you, one of your buddies, and you absolutely worked him over. <laughs> and he was – he couldn't believe it. He wasn't happy about it. And <laughs> he he wants to get his redemption shot. So my question for you is, A, would you accept an invite to play in a sandbagger against him and Biz? And if so, who would you want your partner to be in that sandbagger? Um, I would take Ryan Hartman pretty quick. He, uh, he's a really good golfer and, uh, he's really good in the areas that I, I'm not unbelievable in, which kind of make us a pretty good team. So, uh, I think I'd pick him pretty quick. Like how he couched that. <laughs> yeah. That I'm not unbelievable. In. Yeah. Not that I'm not good at it. Yeah, like yeah. that I'm, that I'm not yeah. unbelievable. unbelievable. I'm still really good, yeah. but I'm not unbelievable what, in those areas. What, what areas <laughs> would those be? Just <laughs> what would those be? <laughs> He, he's got a good long iron game. Um, he hits the ball far, but he, he kind of knows where it's going a lot more than I do, I think. I like to, to swing pretty hard and just kind of let it go. It's been pretty good lately, but sometimes it gets bad. Um, but, yeah, he's he's just overall a good golfer. He's, he's a great guy, too, so I, I'd love to hang out with him. All right, so challenge accepted. I was going to say, try to line that up. We'll see. I don't yeah. know what kind of pull we have, but we'll try to see. Yeah, that I was going to say, we'll try. <laughs> yeah, don't, wor- don't worry, Matt. We'll yeah. do our best to handle <laughs> We've it. We've got you yeah. on this. Um, I remember talking to you last summer when you when I first asked you about golf, and you told me you shot 62 as your best round at the summer at the time. And this, you may have shot better than that later in the summer. I don't know how you can shoot better than 62, but, you know, again, you probably have. And I checked in on that in the room, and I was like, is, he, is this real? He goes, oh, yes, that's a very real score for Matt Boldy. And you also told me that every summer you'll have at least one very fierce blowout with your brother on the golf course. Has that happened yet this year? Yeah, 
My brother has has been taking me down this summer. I'm one really? three versus him right now. Yeah, my brother's my brother's a good player. He just doesn't mess up. Uh, I'll I'll have like one or two mess up holes around, and he he just doesn't. So they've wow. uh, they've been close. It's not like I'm getting killed here, but he uh, I'm one three and one right now. That's tough. That's it's not that, good. That, not happy. I'm kind of in the same. I'm not a good. I think I shot a 62 once on a par three course. On a nine hole par <laughs> three course. So right. that wasn't great. But I'm not a good golfer. My brothers are better than I am. But it reminded me when I drove uh, across country from San Jose back to Massachusetts a couple of years ago. Me, me and my brother played golf along the way. And I, I don't think he paid for around the entire time because he just beat me on, at every course we played at. It's not fun losing to your brother, so I, was, I know where you're coming from. It's no, not an enjoyable yeah, thing. Yeah, it's definitely not. I was going to ask, do you do you typically do you feel yourself playing worse, Matt, when you play with him because maybe there's that much more of an urge or a drive to beat him that you feel more pressure maybe than you do when you're playing other rounds? No, we play way better with each other than we do oh, playing by ourselves. That, he yeah. really is. He must be that good then. Yeah. yeah, when it matters, when it matters, that's when when we like to play well and. We take a lot of pride in, in our competition here. I assume, I mean, growing up, it must have been just like that, where it's competition all the time. It may not have always been golf. What were you guys most competitive in when you guys were growing up? Um, Like everything and anything that we could be. A lot like most brothers, but uh, he, he's like four and a half years older than me, so it's it was hard to catch up for a while. But, uh, yeah, we, like, hated each other probably until – I was probably like 12, 13, and then we kind of realized that that was kind of all just because we loved each other, I guess, which I'm sure a lot of brothers kind of go through. But, um, but, yeah, he's one of my best friends now, but it was everything. It was it was golf, street hockey, um, basketball, basically whatever we played, football, everything. Is there, like, a most obscure argument that you can remember back in your childhood with him over – I don't know, it could have been something simple as playing uh -huh. cards. I don't know. But did you guys ever have like a no. blowout? Nothing crazy. I used to I used to get really mad at him because, like I said, he was four and a half years older than me. So when he kind of got into his like teenager age where he kind of started to get a little bit more lazy, I was still kind of in my, my full go. And he'd always say that he'd come play street hockey with me and he'd make me play goalie. So he'd say, go get dressed. And then he would never come outside. To play. <laughs> uh, that was probably where our biggest blowouts came from. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like that. That still bothers you to this day, or anything like that. So, I'm sure it doesn't yeah, still exactly. eat away at you. So yeah, I got over it. I got over it. You, it. The more I talk to you, Matt, and the more we I learn about the different facets of your athletic ability, and 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 we we covered this last year a little bit when you and I sat down to do our get to know piece over last summer when you were coming in. Um, we talked about bowling with Cole Caulfield when you were at uh, the NTDP, and you guys used to bowl a lot. And I think you you both said you guys were averaging at one point north of 200 in, in most Come of your. I, I, this is re real, right? This, corroborate this is me. This just on one of those that. things that anything you pick up, you're you're like really good at. Joe Pavelski is like that too. Anything he touches, he's just like a naturally good at everything. We bowled a lot, a lot. That was like all there really was to do. <laughs> So you I mean you told me that you know, I heard the I'm sure the ping pong battles with Alex Newhook were legendary. I, I'm curious, is and 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 maybe he just won't say it because he wants to keep the facade up that he is everything athletically tremendous. But mm. is there anything athletically you've tried where just my hands don't work with this or, or my feet? Is it soccer? Anything that you've tried where you just went, yep, this I haven't been able to master this because so far everything else I've learned, it's like you said, Bavelski picks it up yeah, and he can just do it dialed in. Yeah. Yeah, me and uh, Duham have this argument all the time because he thinks he's more athletic than me. But then we'll say, like, who's more athletic? And he'll be like, well, the most athletic sports are, like, boxing and wrestling and, like, fighting. And I'm like, you're just stronger than me. <laughs> Those don't count. But, uh, no, I'm definitely not good at every sport. Like, I'm pretty bad at basketball. I'm very, very mediocre at soccer. Um but yeah, I think a lot of games that involve like hand eye or stuff like that, I tend to do all right in. Here's a little backdoor love for the Minnesota like social team. 
they need to do something with this. A yeah. Duhame Boldy athletic show. I mean, would that not be something uh, that'd be really fun to do, right? And, and not boxing we, or wrestling. No. But yeah, 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 just no, we Boldy <laughs> yes, yes, in a ring Duhame fighting. fighting. Just, yes. yeah, Bill, Bill Guerin would love that. Yeah, yes, that'd be, awesome. that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, this, we've had our discussions about it. The social team always gets you guys pregame, too. I, I feel like I've seen you shooting hoops or, or playing soccer pregame. I feel like you're probably not as bad as you're leading on. But basketball and hockey, I, I've heard that before. Those don't equate yeah, for some reason. I, I don't know many great hockey players that are any good at basketball. It's weird. I don't know why that doesn't work. That is true. I've seen, like, I, I think there are like times where the court's been down here for, you know, the Globetrotters, or even while yeah, the San Wolves. Jose or Worcester yeah. or the Wolves are here, and it's just bricks. Yeah, it's it's not pretty. <laughs> It's not pretty. Just watching these world class athletes throw up bricks. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah, tough. Um, it bolds. I don't have a whole lot else for you. Um, you know, if Joey, anything else you wanted to get to? Uh, this has been just a ball, man. Which I knew it would be. Uh, pun unintended there, considering we were just talking about basketball. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I will say, you know, talk briefly about your your time in Iowa. It was short. It was brief. You certainly made a gigantic impact when you were here. What? role did it play in the progress of getting you to where you're at now? Um, because even though it was short, I'm sure there were things that you walk away thinking, I, I pulled this from my time with the Iowa Wild. Yeah, a lot. I absolutely loved it there. I think kind of coming in after my college season, I wasn't really sure what to expect and just kind of how the organization won. And then just the guys in that locker room kind of welcomed me in and it made me feel comfortable. And and welcoming like I belong was, was really special. I think a lot of my, my success there came from that kind of welcoming attitude that, that the team, that my teammates had for me, which was, which was awesome. And obviously still have some, some lifelong friends for that, that I played there with. So I, I had no complaints about Iowa at all. I absolutely loved it. And obviously it, it did play a huge role in, in kind of getting used to pro hockey and that level and playing against these guys that, that are, grown men and, and stuff like that and it, it definitely played a huge role in, in kind of where I am right now I think for sure finishing question for me did you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Matt Bartkowski on the golf course because I heard he's a good stick and I also heard he'll do quite literally anything to win on the golf course yeah he's a good player I never played never played in the same group as him we went and had a golf day one day and he, he was in the group in front of me but uh I never played with him I wish I did. I've just heard too many, uh, and even though I was only with him for half a year, I heard he heard too many stories about uh, just the character that guy is. My my last one's got nothing to do with hockey. This is more of a, a we're going to have a Boston moment here. As a Patriots, start keeping track as, of how yeah, many times you say Boston there's on there's the podcast. When we get, when we get, <laughs> but when even we get it, guys, it, i got to bring it up. Even when it's not Boston, I'm sorry, no, I'll no, shut no. up. <laughs> there's ways to bring it up. There's always a way to bring up Boston. Talking about, you know, football season's right around the corner. You got an outlook? You got thoughts mm -hmm. on, on the way that the Patriots are going to look this fall? I think they're going to be great. I think Super Bowl I think or bust? Is that is, what we're thinking? Gonna, I wouldn't go Super Bowl or bust, but I mean, I think they're going to be better than they were last year for sure. I think I think Mac Jones is going to have a, a good year, really good year. That's that's my prediction here. I like the optimism. I'm a little, I'm yeah. probably a little bit more skeptical, I think. The fact the rest of the division got better and Patriots really didn't do a whole lot worries me a bit. But at the end of the day, it's in Belichick we trust, right? They never, they never get the big, the, the big time stars, though, and all the other guys just become legends. That's true. That's true. That's just how it works. Riding the buses version of pro football talk. Yeah. Here we go. Here it is. Yeah. Good stuff. Perfect. Matt, uh, thanks so much, man. This has been great. Uh, thanks for sharing this much time and sharing some great stories and a lot of laughs. Uh, always a pleasure catching up with you. And uh, as you know, uh, we're obviously watching uh, diligently down here and can't wait to see what this coming season looks like for you. And uh, we obviously all just think it's going to be a fantastic year for you. So uh, stay in touch. And uh, thanks again for coming on. For sure. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Gigantic thanks to Matt uh, for giving us all that time and giving giving us a great interview. Really enjoyed that with Bolds. Uh, just like we talked about before we went into the interview, just a, a terrific young man and someone who is going to give a lot to the game of hockey, I think, not only on the ice but off the ice too. He's, I mean, he's someone who's just what we uncovered. He seems like he's just good at everything he does, uh -huh. picks it up, and he's really, really good at it. So uh, I'm excited to see if we get this the sandbagger thing with – Spitting chiclets to see if we can get him and Hartman against Biz and 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 Wit. I think that'd be 
very exciting to watch yes. from just uh, ha- knowing Bolds, but how good he is at golf and hearing you know watching some of those old videos that those guys put out. I think that'd be a lot of fun to see if we could make that happen somehow. I don't know what kind of reach we have, but we're going to find out. <laughs> Real soon. We're going to find out. At bare minimum, at least, a Brandon Duhame, Matt Boldy sports showdown. Yeah. I, I think uh, th- that Obscure one, that sports one showdown. should be more attainable. We yeah. might have a little more reach to get to Minnesota than yep. we can to the Barstool Sports guys, uh, the Spit and Chicklets guys. But, uh, yeah, just a huge thanks to Matt. That was terrific. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it as well. Um, a, a few housekeeping items before we, we finish up. Uh, do we want to start with what's next, or do we want to start with what was behind us uh, last week? I know it was a big week for you. Let's let's start with what was behind us. Uh, yeah, another another big week for me. Just just racking up the wins on these podcast bets, just one after another. Uh, when I'll admit this one, I thought uh, things were looking dire at one point. They were. Um, I think so. Those of you who don't know, me and Ben bet last week that whoever's going to score the most goals in our staff floor hockey league, or yeah, so whoever scored the most goals wouldn't have to do this punishment. We didn't know what the punishment was. We put it out to the listeners. Had a lot of ideas. Mm-hmm. There were some, um, you know, I saw wearing a sauna suit, uh, picking out ties for the broadcast. It's a hard no on the ties. Yeah. That's I saw a, that's someone almost said relig- match my hairstyle. It's almost I know that was a hard no <laughs> for you, too. My dad chimed in he thought he had a great one he, he like sent it texted me about it wanted to make sure i saw Gotta it. Do it the hot pepper challenge which i think we'll we'll do at some yeah, point I uh, wasn't for this i'd one. be open to that um but the idea we came up with here what came from our equipment manager richard shaky kraus I sure did and we've we've tweaked it a little bit i think initially his his response was hey three road trips pretty heavy of his choice yeah pretty heavy round trip in the equipment truck uh, that's that felt like a lot, and also work reasons why I shouldn't spend th- that many hours because th- there is a decent amount of work that I do spend sure. where I need to be able to use the bus's hotspot yeah. that we have. So there is a little bit of work there. Yep. And Shaky, I'm sure, will give me some grief about this. He'll yep. listen to it and say that's not true, but yeah. it is true. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, uh, w- we we talked about it, and even though you and I were joking. We wouldn't have agreed to this bet had we seen the bet before we knew that I had lost because we couldn't the only, send you like in we, the... I, I would have agreed to it. The only way it was tough to agree to it is because I really don't travel. No. Nor do maybe we, we could have like, parlayed it into... Maybe we maybe. could have somehow made that a, a budget item for adding a room for you. Maybe. So maybe. it really could have worked out. It, th- then it would have been kind of fun for you, though, which is that wouldn't have really been a punishment. Yeah, well, but riding the truck would have, would be... That's a that's a long... It's a long ride. And yeah. it, the truck's not comfortable like... like the I drove buses. the truck last year. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, uh, yeah. maybe this is something <laughs> for down the line. We, we have to find yeah. a way to punish me. Maybe it's... For it's a punishment, maybe it's because we're sending me on a bus trip to Milwaukee or something like that, like a, a far ride in the truck mm-hmm. where it's not an easy one to get to. takes a little bit of time. In the back of the truck with all the equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that'd something. be really dangerous. Yeah, no, not putting no, you we'll, there. we'll think of something. But <laughs> yeah. uh, So, yeah, so that's a punishment. So Ben is going to uh, join. Uh, it's going to be one way, but he's going to go to Rockford in the equipment truck. And he's going to bring all the equipment with him. And he's going to try there. to figure that out. We may need yeah. to get a generator of some kind or yeah. even if it's not the equipment, find a way to record it. Because yeah. I do think that the banter in there I've heard is legendary. I've yeah. never ridden in the equipment truck with Gavin and Shaky before. But to capture some of that, I think, would be really, really unique for our yeah. fans to get to hear what that is is like and we're not going to give you the full five hours no no that's a no, long no. podcast to record but no. we'll, you know we'll cut some of the highlights best of uh yes yeah, so that's the punishment how we got here <coughs> to the floor hockey game was was intense um i think the entire first period of the game you spent on the sidelines <laughs> yep. the entire second period of the game i spent on the sidelines yep. uh we're coming down to last it must have been two minutes left or ish I think you were up ten seven. It was nine six. Nine six, something like mm-hmm. that. It was a there was a three. Trust goal. me, I've I've reran this in my there brain. Was a three and what I could gap. have done differently. There was a three goal gap, and I, I don't really know. Aside from Marquise, I don't know if anybody really knew. I mean, we were just anytime either of us got the puck, sh- we were just shooting. That's not altogether not, true. Not passing not altogether entirely, true. but Ben will tell you that he had seven assists. I, re- I, retracted, I retracted it. It was five. Okay. Well, Ben will tell you he probably could have shot more. Five assists on ten of your goals. Either How way. many assists did you have on on any of my ten goals? Like two, three, no maybe? No chance. No chance. Well, either way, no you chance. lost. I won. I tied it on a beautiful 
I roofed it. It was. I will. I will. I will. Great. Yeah. That, I will give that you no grief for that. Uh, uh-huh. It was a great goal. What I will give you grief on is it was 18-17 at one point, and this was when it was nine six. So I could have just, I could have just taken the puck and just abandoned my post and tried to just be very selfish and didn't. kept the lead. But you I didn't. set you up twice in that stretch, twice, sure. so we could get a lead and sure. keep the lead. I was playing defense. You were floating I was out floating. at center ice. Oh, I was floating hard. Yeah. So yep. what what I learned walking away was no matter what's on the line individually, I will cater to the team. And what I learned about you potentially is whatever is on the line individually might supersede the team's best interests. Mm. I don't know if that's entirely true. I do think look I'm at a the team stats. Guy. I do think look I'm at the stats. I mean the stats are there. I you got any Bruce in your leg from block shots? I got quite a few, <laughs> so don't tell me that I'm not sacrificing for the good of the team because I think that I did. But, yeah, it came down to a shootout. Ben didn't score once, couldn't hit the broad yeah. side of a barn. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to is it's like what Tim Army always says, you want to have a chance to win at the end of the game. That's, yep. I mean, the goal is obviously to win, but he says this all the time. You, you want to be – you want to have a lead – or a tie at the end of the game. That's that's his a, a genuine. That's more the process of his goal. Mm-hmm. And I gave myself that chance, and you I did. didn't come through. Yep. So yeah. I, at the end of the day, no matter all I want to say about you did look you, at me at one point. And you said you want to see the back. You want to see the heartbreaker, and you thought you put it away after that. Well, that was when I got to ten. Yeah, yeah. it was you nine sellied, six, you and I sellied went 10, in six. my face. I did with yeah. the heartbreaker celebration. Yeah, yeah, it came back to bite you. Yeah, sometimes karma comes and gets you. Uh, but yeah, that was good. Unfortunately, for our team. Uh, that win was disqualified. It was. Went through the league office um, due to the gambling ring that they yeah. uncovered here. My Hall of Fame season yeah. will not be now. There's no way they're yeah. getting into the Floor Hockey yeah, Hall of Fame know. after this game. Yeah, I had to go through the league office, commissioner's yeah. office, which is also me. Uh, we <laughs> had to disqualify that win. Uh, just gives us a championship game uh, in a couple weeks here. It sure does. And the reason the fair. I, was going, I was going to say it's a, it's a wonderful transition. The reason why we won't be playing for the next few weeks is because our staff will be continually rotating through at the fair. Uh, excited about uh, the, the place at the fair that we have, the posi- position at the fair that we have. And the one thing that uh, Brent Arnold, Senior Director of Sales, brought up in our meeting last week, and I thought it was great that he did, was when the Wild first got their spot at the fair, which I think he said was five, six years yeah. ago maybe. So the first four or five years here, they weren't at the fair. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a growth every year, not only the size of the space that, that the group gets, but where it is located, foot traffic. And so it's just, again, it, it, it's a testament to the commitment that this organization has put to being in the community to making sure that the logo that, that we have, which of course none of us are, are conveniently yeah. wearing today, uh, um, to make sure that that's out and that's being in places where there are tons of people to see it and uh, we have great giveaway items and, and mm-hmm. great games fans can come and play. Uh, and you and I specifically uh, on Friday will be out there to do a podcast episode at the fair where we're going to be offering our third microphone to fans, to anybody that wants to come by and join the show, ask questions, talk to us a little bit. Uh, we're going to open it up, and we're really excited about it. You were texting me last night about it. You said, I'm, I'm really excited about this fair fair cast that mm-hmm. we're doing, uh, and I am too, for sure. Yeah, it's something different. Uh, it's it's going to be audio only. We're not going to have any video to it, uh, but it's going to be – it's going to be different. I think it's exciting. I mean, so many people go to the state fair. We're going to be in a great location. We're in the varied industries building, so we're not going to be outside of the heat. It's nice and air conditioned. We got a nice big setup. I think double the size of of what we had last year. We have merch, special ticket packages available. Obviously, enter to wins, all kinds of fun stuff at the fair. And yeah, we want you guys to come by. If you guys have questions, you want to come on and just just shoot the breeze with us for a little bit. Well, that's what we're there for. We'll probably be there for an hour and a half or so. Uh, just just taking whoever wants to come by. We'll probably do some food reviews as well. Yeah, I was going to say if anybody's listening and, and are they want us to try any of the fair foods or curious yeah. to hear our thoughts on any of the fair foods, uh, comment on this post, reach out to us, let us know, because I'd, I'd imagine we'll be doing something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we went through... I think we said you're. You said you're a big corn dog guy. Yeah, I, kind of I don't know if I would do. Food. I wouldn't do a review on that. Yeah, I might want to branch. Yeah, I'm. I'm probably going to like it. I would. <laughs> I'd want to. I'd want to branch out into yeah. something a little different, yeah. perhaps. Um, but it certainly open to trying new things uh, at the fair. So, any thoughts on that? Let us know. Yeah, swing by and then uh, I guess keep an eye out too. The following week, I think on Thursday the 18th, we'll be roaming the fair. Yep. Doing some man on the street type stuff, asking people some questions. So if you're there and you see us, 
try to weasel your way on camera and we'll ask you some some fun questions see how much you know about the game of hockey in the Iowa Wilds we're gonna put people to the test we so. are I'm excited about that as well anything else uh no I think that that kind of wraps it up we'll see you at the fair make sure you go like subscribe leave us a review that stuff means a lot to us uh, it helps us really get things off the ground helps us prove to to our bosses <laughs> that people are listening this that is worth, worth the time it. the investment so definitely go and do that uh, other than that, we'll plan on seeing some people on Friday at the fair. Per normal, big thanks to Jeremy Core and Executive Podcast Solutions, as well as Marquise Jones, uh, also my partner Joey Goldstein, and, of course, this week's guest, Matt Boldy. And to you, the fans, for tuning in. Always wonderful to have you. Great to be seen. Great to be heard. Uh, until next week, thanks for joining us. This has been Riding the Bus, the official Iowa Wild podcast. And as we always finish, two honks for the win. Beep, beep.